All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we'll be talking about how I would fix Stargia as as a whole, right? And um, there's some kind of like in this video, I'm gonna give you guys like my concepts on how I'd fix it, some ideas that you know a lot of people might disagree on, but it is what it is. Let me know in the comments which idea you do uh, agree on and which one you do disagree on. I'm gonna show you off kind of like the map as I'm talking about the ideas. That's kind of why the game is up right now. But also all my like little ideas and concepts, they're all gonna be down below in the description for you guys to read along or anything you want to do with that. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go over the points. I'm gonna show it to you on the map and it's gonna be kind of like an interactive discussion video. So, um, okay, so like I said before, some of these ideas are kind of game changing, but it's not super crazy in my opinion, right? So first, let's talk about the Sturgeon bonus, which is 20% uh, speed penalty reduction uh, while traveling in snowy areas. Now, um, the snow does spread down to like, let's say, I say around over here, like all the way in the dead of winter. But then uh, at the dead of summer, even some parts of Sturgia, like a big part of Sturgia doesn't even have um, snow in it. So uh, in my opinion, it's very situational, obviously right now with the whole 20% penalty reduction. What I think they should do is make it a 10% speed boost in snow so get rid of the reduction completely it's going to be a 10 percent speed boost in snow which is actually better than the kaze uh speed boost if you think about it because the kaze kaze uh speed boost what's it called it doesn't account for any penalty like there's no penalty it's just a 10 percent speed boost um what's it called across the board but f in terms of let's say uh a kaze wandering in the snow and a sturgeon wandering in the snow the sturgeons would actually be faster because the kazates would have the penalty plus the 10 percent obviously like always but they would also have the penalty applied but um i think that would give sturgeons a good um i'll say a foothold in terms of like the snowy areas on the map and then a secondary effect is here's a new concept for you guys hardwood consumption while in snow areas is reduced by 50 percent now, what I what about what do I mean by hardwood consumption? I think while you travel in snow areas, snowy areas, and it's a very big concept in a lot of games that do have snow in it. It's a very common concept in my opinion, and I think it does make sense for this game because we have the concept of hey, you need to maintain food to keep your soldiers happy, right? Very simple. And uh, once it runs out, they'll desert. They're gonna um, obviously, what's it called? Starve to death and all of that. Their morale will go down simple right now i think there should be a secondary consumption um of hardwood whenever in snowy areas um and what i mean by this is whenever you're in the snow um you need to consume hardwood pretty much make it into a fire to keep your troops warm while you go through the snow now if you do run out of hardwood troops will die or desert in the same way they do with food also the hardwood consumption is based on your army size and um, it's not going to be anything too drastic. It's not going to be like, um, you know, the, the same way food goes down really quick. It's not going to go down that quick. Hardwood consumption is going to be a lot less, um, how can I say, as important. But it, you should still always, you know, make sure you have some hardwood in your inventory. But I think it's not a crazy concept, but some people might disagree. And uh, why I did say a 50% reduction for Sturgeons um, is because they do stay in a st uh, snowy area most of their time uh, that they're roaming the map. So I think that they should have kind of an easier time, especially when it comes to like early game, if you are the player and you are playing in Sturgia. I think maintaining a lot of wood on top of everything else is kind of, you know, a lot. That's why I pretty much made it 50%. Initially I was making it 20%, but I think 50% 50, 50 is um, a good place in my opinion. Now, second and big point is um, landscape. Uh, Sturgeon settlements are in a very linear path. And um, in my opinion, there's not much choice when it comes to like, you know, what road do you want to take to get to this town or castle? There's usually only one way. Here's what I mean by this. Let's say, uh, for example, let's say this town right here. How do you want to get to this town? You can come from here, 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 you can come from here here you can come from here you can come like this you can come around like that you see how much ways like most towns in the game they they're accessible from almost four ways all the time if not more most um you know even like places all the way on the side of this map from here from here 
what's it called from here from here it, it accessible you know very accessible now let's go look really quick at some sturgeon settlements and uh let's see it so uh this one right over here how how accessible is this castle can you come from here no this is a dead end what's the only accessible really way you can get from here is this this path right over here yes you can argue well you can go down this way as well but this right here choke point huge choke point if you want to get to here or here it's just a one-way linear path now if we go to um let's say uh this this isn't a linear path this is kind of good but again only two ways boom boom now if we want to get to this place again huge choke point here there's um what's it called huge choke point here there's just a lot of huge huge choke points and it's all like in a linear path it's like you want to go this way linear path linear path you want to hit this town you can say that there's two paths but again it's just like huge choke points all over the map and i think that's a real big disadvantage they have and i'm pretty sure you can't even cross over here so therefore the only way you're going to get to this castle is through here um this brings me to my uh pretty much second big concept in my opinion that um you know a lot of people might disagree with, but I think it's actually a very, very good concept that would make a lot, a lot of sense. So um, I would like to see the ability to go through certain areas and mountains and each kingdom can only go, uh, can only do this in their starting locations. For example, Sturgeons can cross mountains in their starting locations and Vlandians in their starting locations, for example, right? Uh, there will be secret paths that only the natives will know and the outsiders will not Here's what I mean by this. So uh, let's do Sturgeons, for example. This area right over here. Um, yeah, let's let's use let's use this mountain pass right over here. If you pick the Sturgeon culture, uh, this is the pretty much the starting location. Uh, this is like I just loaded up a new game, and this is the starting location of the Sturgeons. So um, this whole location, if you pick the Sturgeon culture you will be able to uh, go through certain little paths that other kingdoms will not know about. As in, if we use this mountain pass, for, uh, for example, if you are a Sturgeon, this little path right over here, you'll be able to cross through to get over here, if that kind of makes sense. And another example, let's say um, right over here to this way. This is another path you can use. And uh, let's say right over here to over here. This is another path you can use. And... Um, for another kingdom, just to use another example, let's say you're the Batanians. If you're the Batanians, you can use this path right over here to get through. And it would just be select paths, right? There would have to be a lot of balancing for it and stuff of that nature. I get it. But it would severely help the Sturgeons, apart from any other, um, what, do, what would you call it? Any other uh, kingdom. And also, what I would like to see is I would like to see that you're able to go over here and then bounce it right here. I think there should also be, this is like a little side fact, right? But I've always thought about it. Same thing that is going on over here should go on right over here. Just as a little side fact, right? But apart from that, I think the um, you should be able to cross certain mountainous areas and it would help the Sturgeons a ton if they were able to do it. It would, it would give them a more um, diverse uh, choice of paths that they can go to to get to their settlements. Not just a, a pretty much a straight shot whenever you wanna go somewhere. Because it, the whole point of the straight shot, it makes you go a lot slower uh, because you have to go in a specific way every single time. You can't really cut any corners. And also, if let's say the Kazates take over this castle and they take over this town, and then they could just slowly keep pushing up, keep pushing up, right? And it's like you can never really get around them because once they take over these two places, they're always going to be roaming around here. And you can't like go around this. You have to kind of go straight into it. And that just, you know, it isn't the best in my opinion. I think you should have choices. And I, don't and I really don't understand why in this area, why you can't pass through over here. Maybe you can now, but I don't know. When I, when I used to play, I was not able to pass through here. We'll see. But okay. But in general, um, even like these towns, you should be able to pass through some of these mountain ranges uh, with this new concept. Now, um, onto troops information. This one's kind of tricky. Very tricky. But here's kind of my idea. Uh, it's not very, I wouldn't say well thought out because I did kind of think about it. Did a little bit of research, right? But 
just hear me out, right? So historically speaking, um, we're going to use the Vikings, for example, because they do in a way, uh, I, I, I know someone told me that, you know, while they might be the uh, Kiev and Rus and not exactly the Vikings, they do kind of, you know, by their symbols, by this, they, they kind of resemble Vikings. Let's, let's, let's keep it a stack, all right? But uh, here, here's my idea, right? So historically speaking, Vikings did not care much for battle formations. Yes, some did, but a lot did not. Uh, they often swarmed their enemies by either surprise or by ambush or whatever. And whenever they were raided, you know, it, it was something like that. There wasn't a lot of like, you know, we're going to charge in this straight line to this uh, either settlement or this battle. That's usually not how it worked, right? But they were a lot more fierce and, and overall stronger than their counterparts. Even if you think about, um, you know, the popular, uh, what's called TV show, The Vikings, right? They um, kind of show off how, you know, historically speaking, really, uh, the English saw the um, the English, the Saxons, all of them, how they saw the Vikings. They saw them as like, you know, like these demons from hell, like these fierce, fierce warriors, huge, tall, you know, I mean, very strong, right? That's how they were seen to their counterparts. And in that term, th their morale was completely lost when they saw them. They, it, it, it was a very scary sight. So um, how I would translate this to the game is giving the Sturgeons another formation which allows them to aggressively and loudly, because, you know, like like very loud, like, you know, they have their like, arr, arr, you know, like all that type of stuff, like just rush their enemies, very loudly rush their enemies, not in a line, but more of a way of like a half circle surround, like they would half circle surround their enemies whenever you give this command, kind of, and then, um, once you um, give like a secondary option to that command is to just rush in. And what this would do is it would um, force the counterpart army or like the enemy army to uh, fall back and a lot of the soldiers to just plain out retreat because their morale would be lost. They would be scared. They would be, you know what I mean, because of, of the surround and the aggressive uh, push. Um, exactly how this would be implemented, I don't know the exact, you know, I'm not a big formations guy, but... I think when it comes to morale loss and, and like, you know, the Sturgeons should have that kind of like a thing. Whenever they get into battle, there should be some type of morale loss for the counterpart because historically speaking, Vikings or even the Kevin Roots, they were seen as very, very um, scary opponents, if that kind of makes sense, right? Um, another another um, opponent that would be kind of very scary is also the Kazates, you know what I mean? Like a very scary opponent uh, for their counterparts. Um, so lastly, another very radical idea, but, uh, you know, this one's an iffy idea in my opinion, but I'll still put it in the video. I think executing enemy leaders should give you positive relationships with your clans and their leaders if you are of Sturgeon culture. A lot of Vikings back in the day built their names off raids, battles, and, uh, obviously capturing and also killing famous, um, enemy leaders. I think it makes sense, but it, again, it's a maybe. I think, you know, I think um, in a way that kind of sounds like another bonus to their uh, culture, but kind of here, here's my here's my take on uh, the cultural bonuses and kingdom bonuses. I think there should be so much more description to each bonus. I think it shouldn't just be one main effect and maybe a secondary effect. I think when you're talking about the uh, to pretty much you know to make each kingdom very very unique, you need them to have a lot of characteristics that are different, and that kind of historically makes sense. They do kind of make sense, you know. Like in my opinion, if I was to redo the whole like uh, what would you call it, the kingdom bonuses, which I am gonna make a video on the whole kingdom bonuses thing, is I really wish like. Like, in terms of, like, the Sturgeons, they should have the 10% speed boost in snow, the 50% less hardware uh, consumption, morale loss whenever fighting an enemy, let's say, that has less units or something like that. They should also have the um, the whole thing of, like, you know, if you execute or capture an enemy lord, you get relationships with your clans. Just overall, a lot of different things that, you know, each clan has. And the, for, for the Kazates, it would be a different, um, you know, list of things. I, I think it's kind of, in my opinion in a way kind of lazy design to just give um you know one main and then maybe a secondary option for the kingdom bonuses right not option but kind of like you know um what would you even call it 
I don't even know what, one feature, right? One or two features. I think it, it should be. I think it should have been a, a huge list. Hopefully, it does happen, but I don't know if it will. You know, to be completely honest with you. But uh, there's the video. Uh, those are my ideas. Some are pretty game changing. Uh, I know that. So, um, but I think they are solid, uh, historically speaking, and they would fit into the game either uh, as an in-game feature or with mods. But uh, let me know if you agree or disagree. And uh, we're going to go from there. More videos to come. We have the big uh, beta patch dropping tomorrow. I'm going to cover it. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of my ideas. And uh, like always, stay safe.